Um, so what's going on, ladies? Tell me, anything new and exciting? I don't really have anything that new. Um, I don't oh, have Dora, anything that new. I'm going to close tomorrow in my house, which I'm super excited about. So. Yay. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you told me the 30th. I was going to say, you have two days till closing. Is everything in line? Everything's Paperwork good. And... Everything's okay. perfect. They signed all the papers yesterday. They wired the money. Um, I'm glad the loan worked out over there. Yeah. So they're, they're happy. Good. Yeah. And now I'm just, oh, I work, I, I made a postcard. I made a postcard saying just sold and I mapped out like a little square around their house and I'm going to mail a postcard out to the people around there. That saying, is great. That's how you do it. Yeah, just sold and I'd love to help you if you need help too. So I'm going to get that mailed out. I'm sending it to Joanne today to mail out. Wonderful. With, with the addresses and everything? Yeah, I got them off of, uh, from Title. Great. From David? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Isn't David great? And his software yeah. is awesome. Yeah. I did it off of this app that they gave me. Oh, nice. Perfect. Yeah. 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 So that's a great idea. Usually, um, we like to say that listings create more listings. Right. Yeah, but I didn't have a listing, so I'm trying just to make my own stuff up. <laughs> it's, I mean, any closings, essentially. We say listing, create more listings, but in a sense, you've held a buyer in this neighborhood, so you know it, right? Uh, right. So communicating, when I, when I close on either a listing or a buyer, whichever neighborhood, I then canvas the street with door knocking, if possible, mm -hmm. obviously. Right, I send the mailers and I call uh, those people if I have their number, if it's in my farm. Yeah. Well, let, just letting them know. Because um, that really just creates more business. Yeah, so I might what? try to buy some of the numbers, but for right now, I'm just gonna do the mailing first and then okay. see if I get any response. Um, but Good. yeah, that's what I, that's, that was one thing I worked on. Last so I think that's great. Who's David? What company is he with? David Griffin is with um, USA Title. Mm -hmm. um, and I can make a warm introduction for you uh, on email today. He okay. is um, one of our core vendors that works in our office. And Title, um, essentially what they do is they have records of everything. Right. Every deal that you do, you have a, you know, a Title rep basically that makes sure that there's no liens or, you know, clouds over the uh, listing and stuff like that. Um, they also do title insurance. Right. I reached out to Shauna. Is okay. Yeah. Shauna is also a, a core vendor for us. Shauna and, and David are, you know, basically one in the same. Um, okay. I was like, have you worked food. with either of them? They're both. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's nice to have connection with both of them. Both of them. Um, it's, they're really overlapping. Okay. Um, so just having a, a good connection with one of them was great. Sean is awesome. And David is also great. His son is in the Pirates, I think, the what NFL is? group. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently. I didn't know that. Um, cool. You know, the other one talking. that's nice is that Heidi. She's nice, too. Heidi Galib or whatever her name is. Uh, from Escrow? Yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah. not escrow. She's title, I think, isn't oh. she? I think she's, do you know her? Heidi G-O-L-I-E-B or something like that? I don't, I don't think I, I had the pleasure yet, no. I don't know. Um, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I have Heidi from, Heidi Smith from Resolution Escrow. She's awesome. Like, if you, when you start your own listings and services, mm -hmm. she's just on top of everything. Um, I mean, all of them are. Katie's also great. I mean, Cheryl is great. All of them are awesome. I like Heidi and I like Katie both. I've dealt with both of them and they were both really easy to work with. Okay, good. Um, so I'm just writing it down for me here. Um, Katrina, would you like me to connect you with David? Yes, please. Okay, Appreciate of course. I do have two questions for you when you finish that. Yeah, go ahead. 
So I did all my opportunities and stuff and I, um, I did, and I hit the confirm button. I did it last week actually, but how do I know if someone got it or how do you know if someone's looking at it or I don't know what to do with it. Like no, nothing's going on. Yeah. Um, you are you there's no feedback yeah. system right now. Yes, she does. She's talking about the opportunities where you enter all your files in. Okay. All your forms. And so when you enter forms, it's cool, but you don't get the feedback of whether it was received or not, or whether it's still there or not. It's, or if they even looked at it. And if there's anything wrong, like I, I don't know if anything's wrong or like, I don't, I don't have any comments or anything. Yeah, um, the best thing that um, I recommend you do, which I did, um, is when you finish everything and all the documents are in, submit them, yeah. uh, you know, online. And then a, a day or two later, call Krista or email her and ask her, have this been received? Is there any feedback? It's really mount, okay. mounting on her table, but that's really the only way. I mean, the ultimate way to understand whether or not your file is complete is to see if you get a check. Because if you don't oh. get a check. <laughs> okay. If you don't get a check, then your file is incomplete for one reason or another. So unfortunately, we have to do the investigative part and compliance is not emailing us about it for some reason. Oh, okay. So, okay, got it. I just didn't it, know the process. If I was supposed to do something or... All you have to do is click submit. Once you That's have what I got, but then I got nothing. So I was, I was thinking I would get like a start. They would start saying something was wrong because I'm assuming something's going to be wrong somewhere <laughs> along the way. <laughs> Hopefully not at this point, Dora. But yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. If anything's wrong, I mean, I get stuff wrong or missed dates or whatnot. Yeah, um, or you can get a signature or this or that. Yeah, or whatever. yeah. yeah. all of those. So it's, um, it's, there's, it's, the option is always um, there for us to call Krista and ask what's going on. Okay. Th that's what I'm doing in my, in my escrow. Because okay. I'm, we really don't get any kind of feedback at the moment. You, you used Skyslope before, didn't you, Dora? Never Skyslope. Oh, never? Okay. Skyslope, it, it had this exact system where you would um, upload everything and whatever is wrong or missing, you would get a... There's a small chat box basically for each and every of the files and compliance would just write you what's wrong with it. Missing date on, you know, page three. Mm -hmm. I hope that they're working on something like that. Honestly, I'm not sure if they are or not. But I think that okay. last time I did have like something wrong on one of mine and I did get like a little purple highlight or something on one of the right. little Builds, like okay they do do something if it's wrong good i i guess i guess um, but i just haven't seen anything so i'll follow up i just wasn't sure the procedure i couldn't remember um yeah. and then my last thing is i sent you did you see what i sent you this morning uh no i had i haven't I had looked, a chance i get you know i don't know why well i do know why i get them like at the very beginning i I was doing classes with that Keller Williams office in um, Calabasas. Like they were teaching classes for uh, that were open to everyone. So mm -hmm. somehow I got it on their mailing list. And um, so they sent this thing today and it was about the service that they had just signed up for as a company. And it was like monthly statistics that they were shooting out to all the reps based off of areas. It was kind of cool. I mean, as opposed to like everyone having to pull all their numbers or go to MLS and pull and this and that, like it was kind of a a nice service for um, the agents. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I didn't know who to pass it to. So I gave it to you and Anthony. I, I typically would have sent it, I think to Nikki, but since she's not around. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at it right now. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. Some awesome information. Um, you know where this would come in handy? When you're doing um, either buyer or seller presentation. Exactly. Right. Um, you present your, everything and you, 
Yeah, and you present comps and everything, and then you also present about the city that they're at and what's yeah. the average in the city and stuff like that. Um, also, we, just uh, having an intelligent conversation on the phone with somebody, you know, like yeah, if, yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, it's it's no cost to the agent. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, I'm I'm gonna look into that actually. I have a listing presentation today that's ready, but uh, let's see what this thing can can come up with. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, we also have Info Sparks. You saw that one, I assume, right? I do, but see, that's just the agent having to go and pull everything. Like every agent has to go and pull their own. Like if this was done and shot out to everyone, everyone could just mm -hmm. use it and not waste their time like going and pulling and doing all of that. Doing the research? Yeah. I wonder how accurate it is. Um, Cause it, I wonder if you can customize it is my, is my thing. I know you can do it by city. I don't know if you can do it by, it seemed like yeah. it, well, I don't know. It seemed like they only had certain cities that they may be paid for. Let me, let me share the screen so that Katrina knows what we're talking about here. Um, it's basically um, something like this, mm -hmm. right? So Beverly Hills on July 28th and you getting um, last month or today and then median Lex price in Beverly Hills. Look at this thing. <laughs> the median. That's crazy. What are we doing? Why are we selling those 600,000 homes? <laughs> selling the wrong place. Yeah, the wrong product. Um, okay, but this is still really cool. Mm -hmm. Market segments. Nice. I mean, so this is definitely like a tool that we'd be able to I don't know if we can actually use it. Like, I think that it was only paid for, I don't know how it worked. Like he did it for his, he did it for his area. I think we would have to do it for our area. Have you met many, by the way? Many was the one that uh, re um, recruited me basically to Kelly. Oh, Lane. really? No, I actually talked to him on the phone once, but he's uh, great. yeah, he's so full of energy. He's really... He's very a very good team leader. Like he does stuff yeah. for them all the time. I met I met him way before him or I were in real estate. Um, really? Oh yeah. So, um, he's uh, he's Israeli too, and he's his expertise is in security and martial arts and stuff like that. So he had a company. Oh really? Mm -hmm. um, and then at some point he just joined real estate and never looked back. He was he, I mean look I mean he's a one zero one nine. He's you know he. Oh about yeah, but six or seven years ago, that's it. Um, and I'm four or five, and I'm zero two zero two. So anyway, he um, I I thought if he's a real estate agent online, obviously because he's so active, um, and called him and said, "Hey, I'm I'm, I'm getting my real estate license. Can we talk?" Mm -hmm. That's so um, funny. He's very yeah. inspiring. He's good. He's good. He's really good. I really enjoy um, his. Uh, mentoring is calls and everything else. Um, uh, Katrina, how about you? Anything on your plate? Well, yeah, I mean, I've still been like busy trying to do lead generation. I also mm -hmm. want, um, just finishing up a postcard that I'm going to do. Like, Great. Farm area. I have I'm supposed to get the, the listings today or the um, title agent and um, just finished up like my logo and working on my website. Um, I was just like today I need to spend time because, you know, I was doing my social media campaigns and I kind of was so caught up on like trying to word and do things the right way to actually get penetration, which I finally mm -hmm. was the last week. But then I'm like, okay, what do I do, you know, now? <laughs> So it's like, you know, like, um, cause I'm still learning like the, uh, what is it called? The snapshot, whatever. I'm still learning certain things on command, like certain yep. things 
pretty well and other things I'm like, I need to learn. And then, um, so like when somebody wants some market analysis, I'm like, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think I, I thought I knew until I was like, oh shoot, I need to send this, you know? So things like that, which I should know, but I'm like, oh, I guess I don't really know the best way to do this. Yeah. No, when this stuff happens and, and you know, you hit a roadblock and you're not sure what's happening and how, and how or how to like get something um, done that should be, you know, pretty basic. It's a call to me or Tom. Tom is your mentor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Call to me or Tom and we'd be happy to, you know, show you exactly how to do a market analysis. Right. And we'll do a few um, practices. Oh, do you want to show her how to do the info sparks? Like that is interesting. Yeah, sure. Do you remember how to do it, Dora, yourself? I do. Okay. I've been doing it recently because I did the same thing she did. Like I ran a Facebook ad and then I wanted to make sure I knew something about because it was in the Palisades. And I was trying to make sure I knew something about the statistics of like what was going on before I called them. Um, and I did it through InfoSparks. I don't know. Is there another way to do it? What, to get uh, data like that? Yeah, on the, like on the area. If they were like, how's real estate in the Palisades? You know, like I just wanted to make sure I knew something to say. Yeah, so you could also just run a, a, a big CMA and then hit hit the cloud CMA option, if you remember that. Oh, I never thought right? of that. And then cloud CMA aggregates all the data from the section that you chose um, and essentially creates one for you. But this is more of a presentation thing. If you're just after information, InfoSparks is the way to go. Um, I don't even know what InfoSparks is. Yeah, uh, so we're gonna get to it in a second. If I can find it. Yeah, just go um, back where you were and go to page two. Ah, there you go. Oh, they changed it, huh? Yeah. It's called, um, it's under quick links. Um, apparently page number two used to be a number one, but uh, it's page number two. 10K InfoSparks market trend. So this is under the MLS? Yeah. I'm just kind of trying to do it with you so I can. Yeah, of course. Okay. And then you get something like this. Um, I don't even see that page on my MLS. Sorry. Where did it buy? Can you just go back one? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, if you go to, so uh, these move, those cells move. So just look. Oh, quick links. Yeah, mine's somewhere else. Okay, got it. Um, yeah, yeah. And then it's under what? Um, it's um, page number two, uh -huh. and it's called 10K InfoSparks Market Trend. Okay, got it. All right. And it opens something like this. And it is, it's actually pretty cool. So if we, let's say we have a scenario of, uh, we're looking for a condo mm -hmm. in uh, West Los Angeles. So here you would put the area. Mm -hmm. So West Los Angeles, right? And we're looking for, let's say, all price ranges. Anything between uh, 1,000 and 2,000 square foot. It, we don't care about the year built. Um, now, by the way, you can always create your own um, if you're looking for something that's not appearing over here. And by the way, these, like 1,000 to 2,000 is not exclusive. You can also pick um, the one that was 3,000 and above, for example, right? All years, we're looking for either a two bedroom, a three bedroom or a four bedroom, uh, bathroom, two bathroom, three bathroom, one bathroom. You see how nothing shows up here? Mm -hmm. That's bizarre. Maybe if it's- If I don't select anything. I think it's thinking. Maybe, no. Something shot up for me when I did, I have like a little line oh, thing. There we go. I think you were using four bedrooms and more with, uh, that's under 2,000 square feet. Yep. Hi, Tina. 
Hi, Avi. I love, I love those Zoom meetings where people who can just creep in. <laughs> <laughs> um, cell type, whatever. So that's... I'm sorry, how do you do... How do you do two and three bedroom at the same time? How do you make you see, that? You see that plus button over here? Yeah. That's where that's where oh, you add. Okay. So if you okay. just if you just hit on the number, then it would just switch it. But if you okay. do the plus, then it would add it. I don't even really know how to do all this you're doing. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad it's helping to everyone. <clears throat> so we have a condo. We had all price ranges selected, 1,000 to 2,000 square foot, um, all years uh, built, two, three, or four bedrooms, two or three bathrooms, um, and that's kind of the majority of it, right? But what we're trying to do is get some information. If you look down here, you have um, 10 cells, and each one of them represents something different. So how many homes for sale, right? And um, Oh, so, so this goes way, way back. This goes three years back. We don't want that. That's way too much. Do one year back, right? Um, so you see how low inventory is, can you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is actually kind of um, surprising to me because it's been the entire city. Does that mean there's only one unit like that? Y yes, ba basically. And that's it, but this seems highly inaccurate to me. West Los Angeles, it's fine. Oh, no! Oh. What'd you do? Uh, it reset everything, basically. Oh, it's weird. There, condo, uh, don't care about price. We want this, we want, uh, don't care about that. We want two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom. We want either two bathroom or three bathroom. And we don't care about that, great. Um, so with this, these two, for example, um, this is something that I like to use. And I like to use the bar instead of the line, okay? I'll show you why. Nada. Let's add another area to this uh, and call it. Something just came. Oh, but there's no red. Yeah, this is the entire MLS, <laughs> which we don't want to do. So let's just say City of Los Angeles. Maybe we'll find some, no, not the county. Oh, there we go, we have some reds here. So the way I like to present this information of closed sales versus home sales, home for sales, right? So in 2019, we had three, Jesus, that's so inaccurate. Um, we had three. And then in 2020, we had just one. So this basically is kind of the trend, right? This is what we're trying to show the client how it's changing. So last year, this time of year, we had three sales, right? And this year we have just one. And so Mr. Seller, you can see that inventory right now is lower than it was a year ago. And what that means for your property is that it's probably going to be more fought over by buyers. Does that make sense to you? But Avi, click the homes for sale, not the closed sales, right? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Um, so oh, here it is. So homes for sale was 10 last year, and this year is roughly the same at 10, right? And this is for West Los Angeles condos, okay? Mm -hmm. 
So even though we have more inventory now, things are not closing, Mr. Seller. Can you guess why that is? Uh, probably COVID, probably loans, probably whatever, right? Probably so, condos in COVID, maybe. Exactly, right? HOAs or people are, you know, losing their properties and, and whatnot. So you basically make the relationship here, mm -hmm. right? Between a home for sale and closed sale. And now you, there's also pending sales as well, right? So you, it's, it's pretty consistent, right? Mm -hmm. Three were for sale uh, and pending and one... Uh, in 2020. Days on market is another great indication, right? The average days on market, right, is roughly 27 days and the same for, this, this is so stupid though. Seems weird. There's not enough information here. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just, that is weird. Yeah, so typically it works better. Just do it for us. Uh, do do the Palisades was interesting. If you want to look at that, but just do single family homes. Yeah, and uh, there you go. So that's a little more consistent. Yeah. Maybe adding all of these kind of throws it off. So yeah, that told me that more expensive homes weren't selling as well. I think kind of right. Yeah. So let's look at the Palisades single families, right? 2019, you had 126. 2020, you have 120. So it's pretty consistent in terms of inventory. Now let's see closed. Closed sale is pretty consistent with that kind of information as well, okay. right? Yeah. Closed 22, closed um, 19. Pending sales, is it? Let's see. They have a lot of pending sales, I think. But where's the comparison to last year? Oh yeah, that is the last year comparison. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I like to use the bar more than the the um, the graph, uh, just because it's a little more consistent. So here you go. Something's a little different here. Pending sales are twenty eight versus mm -hmm. twenty two from from this closed sales. Mm -hmm. Okay. Days on market takes a lot longer to sell a property, and so this is basically expectations management with your client, with your seller. So mm -hmm. seller, you got to be prepared that your home is going to sit on the market for a while, right? With everything that's been going on, 44 days is pretty much the average, right? So you need to be prepared to list it for at least that amount. Are you okay with it? Mm -hmm. Right? And so forth. Um, sale price, obviously, you know, that, uh, that's, that can change. And that's also helping. Um, and you can do either median or average here. And that's also helping when you uh, try to, you know, get yourself to price it a little lower sometimes. Um, let's see that it brings up all the info first. But this, all of this information feeds right from the MLS, right? Right from the MLS. Yeah. Um, although I don't really know what's happening with, uh, Why is it presenting the information like that? Sell for square footage, new listings, dollar volume. Um, so you can talk about the square footage. You can talk about how many new listings hit the market. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously sales price. Once it, something it seems wrong with it, I guess. Yeah, maybe something's off with their servers at the moment. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, oh, but this is this is um, basically that tool. So if you want to get information about one specific city or a type of home or anything of that sort, you can get a very like a lot of aggregate data. In can there. you put a zip code in there also? Yeah, you can. So um, you can put zip code and let's say 90403, for example. And you can also compare two zip codes if you want, two or three zip codes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it gives you the, uh, which is 90404. Yeah, and you, and you get to compare all that information. Um, 
so that's on that. I actually wanted to talk to you guys about something else and I wanted to see if you have anything like that, but there you go. So sales price. Mm, so that's interesting. <clears throat> that's very bizarre. That is. <laughs> you see? You need to tell you. So you tell me that all of all properties in Santa Monica, nine hundred four or three, and nine hundred four or four, the average sales price is two hundred thousand or four hundred thousand. Yeah, no. That doesn't seem right. No. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> it seems off. Anyway, don't use this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't forget that. <laughs> What you should do, I mean, this is, it typically works. I don't know what's happening. Um, what you should do here, instead of using this, is really just do your CMA. Um, and your CMA and your cloud CMA as well. Um, do I have my cloud CMA open? I just want to show you one of them. Oh, I have one that I just did um, recently. Um, I can show you. Avi, are you using command for like your ads or newsletters, any of those? Um, I'm using it, you mean for design? No, like to kind of, um, to, to keep track of like, I don't, know, I don't know if you do Facebook or anything like, I don't know much about command, but what I know is that you can use command to publish your um, newsletters or ads or any the campaigns or yeah texts and posts do you got do you do are you doing that through that or I did I did it once with the Facebook ad okay. um, um, it didn't yield anything to me but it was it was just a, a great it was a nice tool I'll be honest like I wasn't like it wasn't too hard or anything like that you can just do it on your own um, yeah um, it definitely I mean their their campaigns are there for a reason um, and you can create one. It's not super intuitive by, you know, the UI, the user, the user interface was not that easy to use at the moment. I know that they're working on making it easier, uh, but it's, it's all there for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is um, what's called a cloud CMA. Um, so after I was in the MLS and got a lot of information uh, that I wanted to present to my seller, I, you know, got all those listings and all those uh, past sales, pending sales, active properties um, that are competing against her and put it all together, right? So it gives you like, it does, and it does pretty much everything on its own once you upload the information. And there are so many pages like this, like you add pages or take them out, right? Mm -hmm. So contact me, that's a page that I added in the beginning. A value of your home, right? Every home is different, blah, blah, blah. Um, and here we go. Here's our subject property and here's the comps that I found for it, for it. right? Um, and so we're going to list it at 999 um, and in, in hopes that uh, we can get it to at least a million. That's exciting. So do you have this listing already? That's exciting. No, I have the presentation today. Oh. Yeah. I bet you get it. Oh, sucks. <laughs> uh, um, so anyway, uh, this presents all those information. I, I did not prepare this. I just gave those listings in um, by the MLS number and it spits out all this information on its own. And it's, most of it is pretty great. Obviously you can edit what you want or what you don't, mm -hmm. but um, it gives you the sold, the pending and canceled, all that kind of information. And so in the end, you get to have a, a real conversation about data with the seller, mm -hmm. okay? But first, obviously you need to do the legwork and you need to find the properties, right? So property details, all those details here, how does that compare to yours? Um, you know, size wise, price per square foot, uh, price, does it have an ADU or does it not? Is it remodeled or is it not? Um, so here we get a lot of these um, comparable properties. Some of them actually actually have um, their 
photos as well, but I took him out. I thought it was too much. Um, and over here, like lowest price, average price, highest price for the sold listings, average per square foot, right? So you know pretty much where you want to get in average days on market as well. Um, and so you sit down, you analyze it yourself first, and then you're able to go in and tell them, all right, here we go. Um, here's the information. So this one, for example, this pending one is the best comparable property for her, right? Um, her property is also in Archwood. Okay. This property is fully remodeled. It has um, uh, an ADU. It has a large lot. Um, it's in Lake Balboa versus Reseda where I'm, where her listing is going to be. Um, so it's a little better of an area, right? And so her listing um, was at 999 and she canceled because she, oops, did not like the agent. Where is that? Oh, the canceled listing is your listing that you're going for? Yeah, so she canceled, and I'm going to try and swoop in and take it. Um, At a similar price. Some, so you think um, it wasn't priced wrong? or I, uh, that's, uh, it, it was priced wrong in the beginning. <coughs> Her entire thing is that when she first listed it, she listed it for 1.2. Oh way over and so the first few weeks where agents should be uh, agents and buyers should be excited about it there it went over their head because it was way above their price range oh got it so we i told her like you need to change your staging you need to do this do that and we need to start the price at something more affordable i'm pushing it for even to get to 950. Mm. Um, and like I said, this comp over here, I called this agent before the meeting I have today just to see, because it's pending right now, where are you standing right now in closing? So he's going to close in the next few days, which is great, and he's closing for his asking price, so 1050000 hmm. which is great, because if we're comparing both of these, this will boost up the price on that one. So I told her, I'd be very happy if we can get you a million, a million thirty for that, for that property. Oh, so you're so, trying to get her to list it at 950 to get bids going on it to go up? Uh, I'm going to push her to 950 because I know she's not going to go down there, but at least we can drop it down to like 990 something. Oh, got it. You're going to make it more exciting. Up. Yeah. Basically. More analysis. This is, by the way, this is the Zillow analysis. This is the online valuation. It's just nice because a lot of people use Zillow and Redfin estimates. Um, so um, you can see that it was actually pretty close to, um, you know, the solds. They predicted um, 860, uh, 653, and it was sold for 800. So that was really close. Mm -hmm. Same for this, and pretty much close to this one. It went over um, by a bit, but you know, it ended up selling for right around there, the ballpark. Mm -hmm. um, this would get sold for this price, so there, you know, there'd be pretty much spot on by three dollars. And this, you can see, this estimate for her is about a million dollars. So we can talk about this. You want a million too? Forget about it. You're not going to get it, mm -hmm. right? Because people are looking at this number and people are saying, "No way, I'm paying two hundred thousand dollars over just because it has an ADU." That's absurd to me. Right? How much do you usually add for like an ADU in terms of value? AD, uh, it depends on the ADU, but essentially to, to build an ADU from scratch, if you're just a homeowner and not a developer or anything like that, it's about 80,000, okay. 60 to 80,000, something like that. Okay. How about a pool? What do you, what do you add? Pool, I, I, I range at about 20,000. Kind of rule of thumb for me. Um, not more than that. I don't think. What? In terms of value? In terms of added value yeah depending on the pool right if it's you know a conventional valley pool then yeah it's 20,000 if it's you know a infinity pool up in the uh, Be uh, Bel Air Heights then you know it goes for more wow okay I, I was like under the impression that we add maybe f at least 75 to the pool because it takes at least that to build I, I so I go by construction costs typically, and I know that building a regular pool in a conventional single family house 
is roughly about 20,000. Okay. So I add just that 20,000 to be conservative. I don't add, you know, uh, the, the inflated value of it because I don't want the seller to be like, okay, well, I built it for 20, but I want 40,000 for it. So let's add, you know, another 20. And then it just, it, it just continues to inflate and, and then it won't sell. Right. We want to keep our sellers grounded um, as much as possible, obviously. Sold properties and then suggested list price. You can control this number, obviously, but if you don't put a number in, then it does it for you. So um, all these sheets in there, you didn't do the Zillow estimates and all that. That was uh, all in there. I, I didn't do any of the, any of the stuff that you're seeing here. I did not touch. The only thing I touched was this. Um, mm -hmm. And that's because the, 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 what it wanted to do was a weird number, like 997, 573. And I'm like, eh, just put it 999. Yeah. Right. Um, understanding. And then there's a lot of like info sheets, understanding the listing contract, commission distribution, choosing your real estate agent, um, intelligent pricing. This, I love to, I love the visuals on, on these. And it basically tells you what's the asking price and what's the percentage of buyers who are going to come in and see it, right? So out of 100% of buyers, right? If you market, if you put it at market value, you get about 60%. I don't know if you can see this. You get about 60% of buyers. You put a 10% under asking, you're going to get an additional amount of people, right? You put it at 15% under ask, you're going to create a real huge competition. Does that make sense? Is this the time to take that kind of strategy, Avi? Like go no. low and start a bidding war? Depending on the property. If you're looking, for example, if you're in <clears throat> my buyers right now in Pasadena, if you're a buyer in Pasadena right now and you're trying to buy a single family house that's, you know, a two bedroom, one bath, or, you know, two bedroom, two bath, whatever, maybe a thousand square foot, and those are going like hotcakes with, 20 or 30 offers on them, then you're looking at creating a real competition. If instead of listing it at 700 or 750, that, that's market value. If you put it at 650, whoa, hold your horses because a lot of people are going to come in and a lot of people are going to put a bid in, right? If you're a Pacific Palisades seller and your property market value is about three and a half to $4 million, you might not want to do that yeah. because you could lose a whole lot more than there is to gain at this point of time. Yeah, I get um, that. There's... That makes sense to me. Yeah. 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 Um, intelligent pricing and timing. This is actually another, so this is activity versus time on market. And these are weeks. So this is week one, week two, week three, right? After week three, we're going to start seeing a decline in interest. And I'm sure that makes sense to everyone, right? Yeah. All the active buyers are going to be here because they're actively looking. Their agent is actively looking. And so whatever you find here um, is typically where you get the highest offers. Okay. So that's another visual to use. Uh, curb appeal, you know, a first impression, curb appeal. There's more about staging probably, open house checklist. Um, they even tell them how to clean up for showing, right? Um, buyers today were like, this is, look how ancient this is. The median size existing home purchase in 2010 was built in 1990, right? This is dated, for example. So you wouldn't use that at all. Uh, selling your home in a tough market, um, which is, you know, good for today. So you need to price it right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drill the price into her. I'm gonna drill the price and I'm gonna drill the buyers that I want to come in, right? So all these together need to, I need it to resonate inside our head. And I'm gonna be very question-based, right? Do you know this yeah. lady? Do you know the lady? Um, she, she was a referral by an old client of mine uh, who basically said, well, you need to help her. She's not selling your property, but she has to. Mm. Um, so he just gave me her phone number and I called her and I said, well, you know, my you know, my, my client, Joe, referred me to you. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. I bet you're interviewing a bunch of other agents, but I'd like to take a moment of your time and explain what I do best and why it worked for your friend and why it could work for you. 
Are you doing it in Zoom? I'm actually meeting her in person. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, we'll put on masks and I'm gonna go to her listing and we're gonna sit over there because what, what I also like to do is I like to go to the listing um, that I'm going to do the appointment in because I'm gonna do a walkthrough inside it and see it, right? So that's, that's what I would present uh, more than anything else. And this is all like customizable. And when the time's right for you guys to do one, either call your mentor or me. I'd love to help with this. This is actually really fun for me for some reason. Don't ask. I run that for um, buyers too. Cause I think yeah, of course. Yeah, buyers need to know about this as well, right? Mm -hmm. They need to know what's in the market, what's available, what are the comps, and then showcase everything. Um, I don't think we have time. I wanted to do this with you guys. Um, it's uh, it's something that I like to do. It's a buyer questionnaire uh, with all the questions in it that I like to ask personally. Um, um, and so I just had a buyer consultation not too long ago with Erica and Carlo, and we started to list like this is like the the main like cover sheet, mm -hmm. and there is a bunch of questions inside that we ask and answer and then put on the cover sheet. So it's a lot easier. So we can talk about this um, maybe on Thursday or if you want, call, give me a call. Um, it just you creates a structure. Send us the shell? Can we see the shell? Oh, you want to see just the, yeah. It's the blank form just so that we have it. So you just want to get stuff for free, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, did you get them off or did you find a house for your lady? we did um okay we, we found an we found a house we put we submitted an offer they have eight offers this is what happens when you price it you know just below or price very well and now they're asking for a counter that's a hundred thousand above the list at the minimum the yeah so it was it was listed at 1.375 and they say the counter has to be no less than 1.475 wow. and then all these shortened contingencies so yeah we're going to pass on this one it, now this is way <laughs> above our my client's budget that's crazy so then they went a hundred above yeah someone must have put in an offer at a hundred above for them to counter that way i mean that's that's what I'm suspecting. I can't imagine them doing that uh, without an actual an actual offer that way. Yeah, because everyone could fall out. Yeah. So Avi, I have a quick question about that. When mm -hmm. you receive, let's say you receive eight offers, do you have to counter all eight at the same time, or can you keep, let's say, two and then counter six? Uh, no, you would. Um when you as as a seller's agent as a listing agent um you would aggregate all the all of the offers that you get and you would mm -hmm. do either um a multiple counter offer for everyone multiple counter offer for just you know the top offers um or outright accept one of the offers okay uh there's no rounds in this. There's um, there's um, typically just one round. And if you only have one offer, then it's just one counter, right? It's not a multiple, it's just a seller, it's a seller counter offer. So it's different. Um, yeah, so if you get a counter, by the way, uh, so you just said that someone put in 100,000 over, Submit your offer. You have nothing to lose. That hundred thousand over could be just you know um, a very excited buyer who's, who's you know you know jumping over their capabilities just to push out everyone else and then settle on a different price. I've seen well, that happen. So the counter says you have to you have to counter at a price no less than one point four seven five. Hmm. The counter said that? Yeah. Okay, that's that's absurd. I wouldn't um 
I would call the agent to ask what the hell. What you know, are the because, by the way, even if he says that, you can still do whatever you want. Tina, what are the other stipulations he put in there? Um, so, uh, 10 days for inspection contingency, 14 days for appraisal, 17 days for loan, um, lease back for 14 days at buyer's PITI. And then, um, what's that mean? Like they want the, they want to lease back the house for 14 days, but they'll pay the buyer's principal interest tax and, um, insurance for those 14 days. So basically at cost. They want you to lease it back to them at the cost of how much you would have to pay for the house for those two weeks. Mm. And then um, and then we have to write that buyer is made aware that sellers are California licensed real estate brokers. But yeah, so the first number one um, in other terms in the counter offer is buyer to come back with best and final at no less than 1.475. Okay, so basically, Avi, you're telling me to call him and because I basically just said, you know what, we're, we're not going to do that. Yeah, call him, call him and ask, like, um, tell me more about that price that your seller has requested. Um, um, but wait, is the listing agent the seller? No. No. Oh. Yeah, he's representing these two that he doesn't really know. Um, but apparently they have, they're not practicing brokers, but they're licensed. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So ask him, ask him about this. Um, like what the hell, <laughs> what's going on? Why? Is that kind why? of, weird? it's not, I've seen that before. And, um, they do that when they have an offer at that price, at that price already. Right. Right. So that's your question to him. Do you have an offer at that price yet? He okay. might tell you no. Because if he doesn't, then that's just something that the sellers are aspiring to and wanted to make sure it's conveyed to all, to all the buyers. Right? But you could be against other buyers right now who are really in the same boat as you are, are asking like, why is it so high all of a sudden? Right. right? So, Communication with the agent is key. I know that this guy is a high D, but like, get that information. Um, yeah, I, he he softened up a little bit yesterday. So oh good. I was all I I was I went in. I call. I was prepared to like you know just go and extremely pers be precise and like professional and just and he was just chit chatty for some reason. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I will call him back instead of. Instead of just giving, okay. I thought it was like, it was just like a, I thought it was like a lost chance for me. No, no, it's, it never is until you, you know, until they tell you no, or until they accept another offer. Keep that in mind. It never is a, a losing cause until they accept another offer. And you can, you can be militant. You can tell that guy, listen, I don't care what you have. My buyer is in it to win it. I am in it to win it. Show some fire in you because yeah. it, wor it worked out for me. I mean, I'm talking from experience. Okay. I have, I was, I beat cash offers. I beat uh, offers that were higher than mine just because of my attitude, just because I showed him, I want this. My buyer wants this no matter what, right? And, and when they hear that, they communicate that to the seller and they hear, oh, wait, this guy's going to close no matter what. So that's much better to me than an extra $10,000, $20,000. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, here it is on one leg. Uh, just so you guys can see. Um, so again, this is the cover sheet and we're filling this out with information when we need them. Um, uh, you keep this, by the way, you keep this entire thing or you can make copies and then send it to them if they want. Uh, buyer information, so you can put it into your database, big picture, motivation stuff, general question, who will be living there, will anyone else be spending time, parents, maid, whatever it is, um, pets, do you need a big yard for it, location, what's important to me, where do you work, are schools important, um, sorry, I'm skipping, um, 
anything about the house that's important you know when when it was built do you need a new one or is it do you need a swimming pool in there um structure of it house interior the bedrooms bathrooms the kitchen the dining anyway wow. um and then your five must haves that's and, they, and you do this in front of them typically like yeah typically yeah. i mean this is a buyer consultation we sit down we analyze their needs we analyze who they are what's important to them how can i be effective how can i help how can i be um you know guiding them in the right direction what do they know already any um so um i don't know it's not here or it is here um one of the questions here is have you found a home that you liked already um and that basically gives me an idea a visual idea of what they're looking for mm -hmm. right so once i get a, an idea of the house with the address that they want but they missed the boat on for whatever reason i can be more precise in my um um research and then bringing up properties that they're actually interested in i have a silly question do you feel bad nowadays when people like give you the house they want like do you feel like you didn't do your job <laughs> no not at all no mm -hmm. the value of an agent nowadays had switched from 10 years ago 10 years ago it really was about finding the properties and sending them over and then <laughs> scheduling meetings to go see them it's not the case anymore we are not um hey what's today oh today's the 28th good okay um i have a class to teach tomorrow um today everything's online and the buyers will know way ahead of you what they want yeah most buyers nowadays are so in tune with what's happening with the market that you know they'll be sending you properties right you can still do your research you can feel you can still send them properties because you might surprise them with locations that they never thought about with um you know property types that never thought about stuff like that but the value of an agent and that's part of my script by the way my value nowadays is not to bring you properties that's more of your department today with how everything is just available to you my value is in the negotiation and winning you the contract and then guiding you through inspections and getting you credits if possible right that's where i really excel winning the property negotiating for it and uh, and potentially getting you um additional um credit the word i use uh concessions from the seller okay that's really why and, and I'm, I'm telling them straight up that's really why you hire me for not to bring your properties but to win you those that you want that you actually want it works You'll see it. I mean, Dora, didn't your buyers come up with the properties that you? Uh... Yeah, they did. I mean, that's why I'm like, I was like going, wow, I didn't even find it for them. They found it for me. Tina, didn't your buyer, uh, uh, Natasha, did the same thing? Yep. Redfin, I mean, she gets, you know, real time, just as the same time as we do, all these alerts, and she sees it and she sends it to me. Yeah, I like, actually I found, by the way, that. Um, Redfin and Zillow are quicker in notification than the MLS. Yeah, same here. You found out there? Yeah. Yes. So again, the buyers will come to you first with you know new properties that are hitting the market. Yeah. Be, be prepared. So it's not a silly question, Dora, because it's, it's really what's happening. And you feel like you're useless at times where they're doing your work for you. Yeah. Right? And, and some of them will, will carry you on that. I was like, why do I need to find my own property? Right? And hey, you'll tell them, I, well. I don't, find, I don't find the MLS so hard, easy to navigate to find things. Like, even when I called you yesterday trying to find an ADU, like, it's hard. It's hard to find things on the MLS, I find. I don't know. Um, raise your hand if you think, oh, I can't see you guys, but tell me if you think that Redfin is much better to sign properties than the MLS. I do. 100%, right? And that's specifically because it's geared towards users, not agents. With agents, our filters 
are much more intense, much more intense. And it creates an issue for them. And you may be surprised that the MLS platform that we use is actually brand new. It used to be much older in data. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So that's the new version. <laughs> well, also, this is the thing about it is, is you have, and I guess they have to use the same information, but the information supplied by the different agents, some is good and some is bad. Like some people fill out the form so well and put all the things in and some like hardly fill them out. So it's yeah. hard to find things if you're using all those specific filters and they haven't filled in the line. That's correct. Yeah. That's why on the MLS, um, you can be as specific as you want, but it's not recommended because in the end, it's humans that are plugging in on everything. Yeah. Tina, even, even um, um, you had that question. I forgot exactly what it was, but even if it's a two bedroom house, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the listing agent can put that it's three bedroom because one of the rooms can be converted into a three bedroom. Mm -hmm. Full control. I had a listing where I did something similar. The property had an ADU that's not legal, right? They converted the garage, but it wasn't uh, permitted, right? And so I included it in the square footage, but I wrote a disclaimer both in the description and the type of square footage where it's, those are just estimates not to be guaranteed. Mm. Right. And yeah. so from an 1100 square foot house to a 1500 square foot house, there's a big difference. Right. Yeah. I had such a huge influx of people. Some of them were disappointed. Some of them were okay with it because all they cared about is that there's an ADU. Um, but I had a huge influx of, of buyers who came in and I told them, well, have, and, and if they confronted me about it, I told them, well, it's in the description. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we can do whatever you want to that information. And so keeping it broad when you do your searches is very relevant. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, you miss a lot of stuff if you make it too specific. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Same with info sparks, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Avi. You've spent a lot of time with us today. Um, yeah, part yeah. of the job. I like doing this. I hope, I hope you, you, you get some of it, um, some good information out of it as well. Yes, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, so tomorrow is going to be fun. Tomorrow I'm doing a lead generation class. That's actually pretty cool. It's about what lead conversion. Uh, on what? It's about, it's, it's lead conversion. What does so that you mean? talk into, you talk to a potential buyer or seller and you end up meeting them and they decide to go with you or not to go with you. So how mm -hmm. do you make sure that you actually get them and convert them into a client from the prospect? Tomorrow at 10 a.m. All right. Yep. Yep. It's scheduled. <laughs> 10 a.m. It is. And See you guys there. Uh, Tina, you need to call your agent. Uh, I know. Dora, you need to call Krista and make sure that everything is in line. Yeah. Karina, you keep doing what you're doing best and keep lead generating like crazy. Yeah. Thanks, Bobby. Get that client. Get that client. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.